How can I keep my wallet backup safe? And where do I store it? Rotten asked how to properly protect your wallet backup. You may also know this as a recovery seed, and it refers to the list of words that correlates with the cryptocurrency wallet. If you've ever used a wallet for self-custody, like a Trezor hardware wallet, then you know that when setting it up, you're presented with a list of 12, 20, or 24 words. The list of words which is generated by your device represents the wallet backup. You can essentially think of this as a password, but it technically represents a private key, which is what gives access to a wallet that stores your digital assets on the blockchain. Fun fact about the backup, it doesn't actually start as a list of words. It's actually a large random string of characters which gets converted into a list of words to make it more human readable. Before the invention of backups, you had to enter a huge series of characters every time you wanted to access your cryptocurrency. Not fun. All of this started in 2013 because a group of smart individuals, including Trezor's own founders, Pavel Rusnak and Marek Palatinos, also known as Stick and Slush, figured out a way to translate the code that comprises the private keys into a simple list of words. A practice that's now industry standard, and another reason why you should opt for a Trezor, because we're the OGs. But coming back to the backup, the words in your wallet backup must be written down in the exact order they appear. And it's critical to keep this information private. Anyone who gets access to your wallet backup gets access to your crypto. Remember, not your keys, not your coins. So where should you store your wallet backup? When you purchase a Trezor hardware wallet, the packaging will include a card specifically for this. It's a small booklet that's used for writing down the word list when initializing your Trezor device. A pair of cards is included per package. But is that enough? And where do you store it? That's something we'll be covering in this video. You can always take inspiration from online, but we don't exactly recommend it. Here's our advice on how to approach this. And remember, everyone's situation is different. Only you know what's best for yourself. The first thing you need to do is define your threat model. Figuring out your threat model helps inform how you should behave or what steps you should take in order to protect your holdings. So before you get too deep into worrying about the potential risks facing your crypto, take a moment to assess the most probable threats you face. It's important to understand that everyone has a different threat model and it can change over time. You don't want to overcomplicate anything for yourself, but definitely take some of these factors into account. Let's start with environmental risks. Environmental threats like fire, water, or corrosion might damage your backup depending on the material you recorded on. For instance, we've had reports of accidents such as house fires or natural disasters like hurricanes, but it can be much simpler than that. A spilled liquid, an accidental tear, there are many possible scenarios where your environment might come into play, so be sure to consider it carefully. Physical attacks. A person holding 100 Bitcoin in their treasure is a much more desirable target than someone holding a few million sats, which is the smallest fraction of Bitcoin. But only if the amount is known. Simply being outspoken about owning Bitcoin can put you at risk, no matter how much you own. It may seem trivial to talk about owning a small amount right now, but the value of your holdings could increase, or a potential attacker may simply jump to their own conclusions. Imagine someone bragging about owning five Bitcoin back in 2015. That person is currently at a higher risk, which could have been completely avoidable by not saying anything. If you keep a low profile, you're far less likely to find yourself under threat. Sure, a hardware wallet will stop a physical attacker from getting your keys, but it's best never to encourage that situation in the first place. Don't talk about how much Bitcoin you own and secure your keys where only you can access them. The $5 wrench attack. The $5 wrench attack comes from the idea that a person can simply buy a $5 wrench and either threaten or harm you until you give up your Bitcoin. More like $10 these days with inflation, am I right? <laughs> because of situations like this, it's crucial to take steps to secure your assets and minimize the risk of losing them. One way of doing this is to use multiple hardware wallets, which is technically a secure method for storing cryptocurrency. A simpler alternative, however, is to use a single hardware device with multiple wallets each with its own unique passphrase, which we'll be mentioning again later in this video. By following these practices, you can reduce the risk of losing your assets in the event of an attack. Remote attacks. Remote attacks are easily the biggest threat that most people are vulnerable to. This is when an attacker attempts to steal your keys using malware or via a phishing attack. We found that people tend to overestimate the chances of a physical attack much more than a remote attack. The reality is someone breaking into your home and beyond that, getting their hands on your wallet backup is far less likely than receiving a phishing link or getting hit with a computer virus. 
Hardware wallets deny remote attacks by keeping your keys 100% offline. They also let you see exactly what you're signing, which nullifies more sophisticated attacks. Moving your holdings onto a hardware wallet is the biggest security improvement you can make. Before moving on to places you can hide your wallet backup, there are some essential do's and don'ts when setting up your hardware wallet and creating a backup in the first place. Ideally, set up your backup alone. Unless you're wanting to share an account, meaning you want to give another person open access to your crypto, there's no reason to have anyone nearby. This also helps rule out possibilities in case anything unexpected ever happens to your holdings. Similarly, be aware of the environment around you or what recording devices might be nearby. This is why we don't recommend setting up in public spaces like cafes or restaurants, and why we tell people not to say their backup words out loud. Microphones and cameras grow sharper and more sensitive each year, and there's no reason to have them around for the process. Keep in mind that your laptop has a camera and a microphone too. While you shouldn't be overly paranoid, there's again no reason to increase your risk by having your backup visible on camera or saying the words out loud. Never store your wallet backup digitally. Compared to a physical copy, digital media can be easily accessed and digital copies can be made without the owner noticing until it's too late. For every model except the Trezor Model 1, never enter your wallet backup anywhere unless prompted by your Trezor device in a process that you have initiated. Otherwise, don't enter it into a computer. Don't enter it into a phone. Don't give it to anyone who says they're from Microsoft, Apple, or Trezor. Because spoiler alert, they're almost certainly not. At Trezor, we will never ask you to tell us your wallet backup, even if you're speaking with one of our customer support agents. So let's talk about storing your wallet backup. We're going to give some specific examples here, but when it comes to storing your wallet backup, the important thing to remember is that concepts matter more than your specific storage method. There are two concepts in particular that you should always prioritize. The first concept is that you should store your crypto somewhere that only you can access. For example, a lockbox is good for physical protection, but if someone other than you has access to it, it's not a good candidate for storing your backup. The second concept is durability. Let's say you live alone and you choose to write your backup down on a piece of paper. And then you put that piece of paper in a shoebox. And then you put that shoebox in a locked basement. And then that basement is guarded with sophisticated traps and a pet alligator. You might have solved the problem of access because the odds of someone getting to your backup are next to zero. But if a major storm blows in and your basement is filled with water, your piece of paper is done for. So with these two concepts in mind, access and durability, here are some potential ideas for storage. Remember, there are pros and cons for each option. So consider your threat model before deciding on a solution that works for you. Using a home safe. Storing your wallet backup in a hidden safe at your house is a great way to control access to it. However, the knowledge of a safe alone is enough to raise interest of a potential thief. So if you choose to use this storage method, you should keep it in a discreet location, away from the eyes of guests, housemates, or anyone that might spend time inside your home. This is a good moment to point out why figuring out your threat model is important. If there's a possibility that your Bitcoin or crypto holdings are known by others, and that knowledge is in any way connected to your home address, a home safe might not be a good option for you. A more flexible recovery method, such as a multi-share backup, might be more suitable. So that even if the backup contained inside your safe is compromised, the remaining shares will help keep your funds protected. Another option is a hidden location on your property. While not as secure as a hidden safe, it's possible you have a difficult to access or discreet location on your property where you can hide your wallet backup. Something like this is a judgment call on your part. Remember our two concepts here, access and durability. Hidden locations are usually good about preventing access by others, but they're much more susceptible to environmental factors such as wet conditions or erosion. And since we're talking about environmental factors, a frequently discussed method is burying your wallet backup. Burying your wallet backup underground is often discussed as a storage option, but there are several reasons this might be a bad idea. Many materials will degrade faster in a damp or acidic environment, so proper precautions should be taken to limit exposure to dirt, humidity, or other potentially damaging conditions. For example, someone living in California might be more concerned with a fireproof storage method, whereas someone living in Florida might want to be more cautious about humidity. Obviously, other factors should be considered too, such as the location itself, or whether you'll have consistent long-term access to the land chosen. Once again, this is where your judgment comes into play. 
So definitely think things through and err on the side of caution if you choose to go this route. Quick side note here. It's definitely worth mentioning that you should consider adopting a passphrase to up your crypto security. A passphrase is an additional word that's added to your wallet backup to access a unique passphrase wallet. This means your funds are safe, even if your standard wallet backup is compromised. Passphrases are a more advanced feature, but we have content covering this as well if you want to learn more. And since some of you might have been wondering, if paper backups are susceptible to disasters such as fire and flooding, isn't that a bit of a design flaw? And the answer is yes, it is. That's why metal backups exist. Paper wallets are a great place to start, but if you're getting more serious about a crypto investment, it's a good idea to switch over to a metal format if possible. There are many different types of metal backups, but if you want to stick to the Trezor standard, you can pick up a Trezor Keep Metal, which we released in 2023. A Keep Metal protects from fire, water, pressure, erosion, and is built with aerospace grade stainless steel, effectively rendering your wallet backup impervious to destruction. And I can tell you from experience, the way this thing sounds on camera matches its build quality. It's heavy, premium, and completely covers the durability considerations discussed in this video. Those are the basics of keeping your backup safe. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments or message or support online. Happy hodling, and we'll see you for the next one.